In May 2015, Roger Top, along with his family, visited our museum where they took a trip down memory lane looking at all of the archive material our museum had collected over the years during Roger's time when he was stationed at Wattisham. And that, that's Grandpa's favourite picture, but I like, I like the one when there's five of them all in a row going supersonic, going ballistic completely. Have you seen the picture that he's got at home? Yeah. And he's got the cloud, he's got the cloud formation, there's just five of them all in a row. And that's, that's, that's an awesome picture. What else? Uh, there. I asked Roger, how did they achieve that famous 22 aircraft loop? At Farnborough. I mean, that's me. And you will see that we're, we're going vertically up on the ground. And the whole idea is you say so you're in formation there. Yeah. And the only tricky part is when you get to the top end there. Because I'm up there. And my nose is beginning to drop and I'm beginning to accelerate. Whereas this one is decelerating. Yeah. Back. So what I did was to get up there and then I would push forward a little bit. Didn't bump. But he eased off the back pressure. And that allowed him to come up and catch up before I ran away from him. So we were more or less, not, not more or less flat at all. Yeah, yeah. More or less. That was a trick. Get over that one. Didn't have to do with that. Clearly, because he was very young when he came back there. But it was even worse between me and him and him. Yes. They were a long way back. Yeah. It was a hell of a distance between me. So, I, I, could, if I, were, I could be like that, and these guys are still coming up there. It would be a shambles. So it had to be sort of worked out and photographed from the ground, and witnessed by the, from the ground and debriefed. Try, try this, try that. So what's it like today to be a record holder still? <laughs> well, it's all right, quite smug really, because nobody could repeat it. They haven't got the airplanes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny thing. They haven't... <laughs> I said, well, anybody could do it with modern airplanes and really, and goodness knows what else. <laughs> but um, they haven't got the airplanes. <laughs> and in 1958, the Treble One Squadron Aerobatic Team arrived. It was established just two years earlier by squadron leader Roger Topp. I just started with the meetings to work up a little squadron team just to uh, well, do something different than boring holes in the sky. And then we got the Hunters, and the Hunter was a, a huge step forward. At the time, there were several RAF aerobatic teams. Tom Pike who took over Fighter Command. He said they can't afford all this uh, effort going into these formation aerobatic teams. Well, I'm going to have one. And he said, I've decided it's going to be you. And hence we became the Black Arrows. We were fully operational fighter command. And there was no sort of excuse, oh, we've got an air show on. You, you did your operational duties and your air shows if you could. The great rivals were the, uh, the Americans, the Americans in Europe, um, Sky Blazers. Uh, they were great. They were very, they were very, very good indeed. And uh, one of the reasons I chose five, because we could fly very, very good four, but they could fly very good four. And so could the Dutch and the Italians, they could all fly very good fours. And uh, so you might be able to equal them, but you couldn't beat them. But as soon as I introduced five, we were different. You could fly different formations, different shapes. It's not a question of routine or looking up the rule book. For the UK's Farnborough Air Show of 1958, Roger Topp had plans for something that had never been done before. He would need his entire squadron of 16 aircraft 
and additional planes and pilots borrowed from other squadrons. In a spectacular one-off display, a total of 22 aircraft looped together in strict formation. Having gathered up all this aeroplanes and effort and everything, I thought we'd do two loops. Certainly that would, all the public would get a good view. Moreover, the second loop would be much tighter and, and lower and more impressive, faster if you like. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a world record and I wait to see if anybody's going to beat it. I've been waiting quite a while and I think I'll wait a little longer. Squadron leader top finished his um, duties up there and he took 21 aircraft. They just disappeared. And I at the time was working on top of the hangar. And I was set up there, one leg dangling over the edge, the other one inside. And all of a sudden I looked across the airfield. And, well, about 100 foot high I reckon. If that was that. But all in a line, coming towards me. And as they came to the hangar, they went straight up. Nearly blew me off. In 1960, now under the command of squadron leader Peter Latham, the Black Arrows gave their final display. Roger Topp had rewritten both the rule book for aerobatic displays and the record book. His Hawker Hunter was decommissioned, painted to resemble a Russian MiG fighter, and after being used for target practice, was abandoned in a field. But that's not where the story ends. Maggie Agus and the team at Wattersham Station Heritage brought the historic aircraft back to life. Back in 2009, a friend called and said, um, you used to have hunters at Wattersham, didn't you? I said, yeah, yeah, we did, um, back in the 50s and 60s. He said, uh, well, I found one sitting on the runway at uh, North Lovenham. After much research, not only did I discover it was actually a Wattersham hunter, it was a Treble One hunter, it was also the lead aircraft in the Treble One loop. So when we got to North Luffenham, we looked at her and we just thought, what are we doing? It, this is in a terrible state. Um, the cockpit was full of water, the intakes were of birds' nests, people had put concrete up the back. Um, and then I thought back to, to Roger Top um, and the fact that we could actually bring this home. Uh, and we decided to go for it. Roger Top came to visit us during the summer um, and we were standing around the plane and she was at that stage in her undercoat which was a horrible sickly pea green colour and he said she's going to look fantastic when she's shiny and black again and I think that was that was the moment when myself and the team thought we are absolutely doing the right thing this is where we're going she's going to be shiny black whatever it takes and I also said to him um, you must have had some sort of call sign as the leader. And he said, yeah, uh, the plane was, you know, we were, she and I, Blackjack, Red One. And so from then on, she was named, she, she was Blackjack. But hey presto, in the end, we now have at the museum, a most beautifully restored aircraft in every respect. Um, it's an absolute delight to look at, as it always was, uh, inside and out. And there she stands. After visiting the museum, we all took a trip up to our heritage workshops, where Roger took great delight in showing his family around his old hawker hunter, Blackjack Red One. Roger was one of our country's true aviators, for without his creation of the Black Arrows aerobatic team, the Red Arrows may not even have been formed. Sadly, this was the last time Roger will get the opportunity to come to the museum and see his old aircraft. So, so.
so how, what sort of job do you think they've made of restoring black? Oh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful job. Brilliantly done. It's uh, correct in every detail. Uh, I just can't fault it. It's, it's wonderful. It captures everything that um, we had at the time. And we were very proud of the, what we had at the time. So I hope this will be here for many years to come.